so good evening students today i will discuss with you formulating research problem right in my talk on literature review i said that the very purpose of literature review is to make research questions is to make hypothesis is to know about your methodology is to know the scope and significance of your study and literature review also helps you while preparing a tentative chapterization for your research so literature review is very very important for a researcher in fact if i will combine research question hypothesis then methodology then scope and uh, significance of the study and chapterization if i'll combine all these thing then i can say that it is the formulation of research problem formulation of research problem even methodology is also or it can be part of the formulation of research problem when you are formulating the research problem you are also thinking your own methodology right in social science i mean every researcher is required to think simultaneously when you are making your research question you are also thinking about your hypothesis when you are making your hypothesis you are thinking about the scope and significance of your study you are thinking about the methodology you are thinking about your chapterizes so formulating research problem means i mean refining the problem here you can use question instead of problem also so formulating research problem means formulating research question so earlier you have a questions and after doing the literature review you are refining that questions what you have thought earlier through the literature and when that questions is refined by the understanding of the literature then that questions after the refinement becomes the research question so research questions are the consequence of the critical analysis of literature review right so after you do the critical analysis of the literature review you find research questions as if one example comes to my mind as if literature review is like samudra manthan and research questions is the amrut now for getting amrut you need to do a manthan and to get research questions you are doing the literature review now during and at the end of literature review the researcher starts thinking about the problem of literature and its formulation so when you are doing the literature review or when you are about to end the literature review you start thinking about the problem of literature friends no knowledge is absolute every knowledge is partial hence in each and every literature the knowledge is not in absolute form every literature is limited or there are limitations in every research and when you are doing literature review 
you must try to expose those limitations. You must find what is the problem of the literature. And you must know how to formulate that problem. Right. And the researcher express his or her formulation through research questions. I said na, the research questions are like Amrut. So every researcher while doing literature review must expose the problem of literature. What is the problem of that literature? And after getting the problem of literature, then the researcher is in a position to define his research or her research questions. So research questions exposes the boundless character of the knowledge and problem of interpretation. So if a scholar will say that I am not able to find the research question, it means he is not a scholar. Research question you will find. Why you will find the research question? Because of two reasons. The first reason is that knowledge has no boundary. No, nobody, nobody on this earth can claim that he has the absolute knowledge. He has total control over the knowledge. Right? So every knowledge is limited and there are limitations in knowledge. That is the first reason you as a researcher will find the research question. And the second reason why you can find the research question, it is because the problem of interpretation. So there are different ways of interpretation. So when an author is writing on a specific theme in his book or in his article, then he or she has applied only one interpretation. But there are many interpretations. You can have your own interpretation and you can problematize the work of that author. And thereby, you can also build up your research questions. So research questions provide the focus of your research. So why you need Amrit? Because Amrit will give life. I mean, you will be immortal. Amrit will make you immortal. In the same way, the research question is the life of your research. Research question provides the focus of your research. Research question will expose what quality you have maintained in your research. Any person after reading your research question can understand what is the focus of your research, what is the purpose of your research. And these research questions, it guides the researcher throughout his or her research. So if your research question is good, fine, qualitatively, or it is qualitative in nature, that you, you, you have made some quality research question. Now these research question, it will help you when you are going to the field for collection of data, when you are analyzing those data, and when you are concluding your research. So this is the power of the research questions. Hence, research questions must be very specific and clear, must have the potential to contribute to the existing knowledge of that area. So you should write your research question in such a way that your research question will be very specific. It must hold clarity and research question must have the potential to contribute to the existing knowledge of that area. Right? You are adding to the knowledge. You are, you are not creating new knowledge. You are adding to the existing knowledge. And that adding is considered as a kind of contribution. You can, some, some will say that it is also the new knowledge. Right. So therefore, effective research questions require effective literature review. That means if you want effective research question, research question that will have 
the effectiveness, then you must do an effective literature review. Without doing the literature review effectively, you may not find the research questions, which is actually like Amrut to your research. So any confusion, students, so far? No, sir. Great. No, sir. Now, there are basically four different types of research questions. These four types are exploratory research question, descriptive research question, explanatory research question, and evaluative research question. Now, I want Nikita to read the exploratory research question, then I will analyze it. I want you to read it. Okay, so. Ex exploratory. That is an initial attempt to understand or explore some social process or phenomena when you may be as an individual, but possibly the social research community to which you belong have limited prior understanding of area or issues. What does it mean of student coming to class? So what is the exploratory question? Now, exploratory, exploratory questions are those questions which is intentioned to explore certain things. That means, as a researcher, you are having limited knowledge on that. But that limited knowledge is not enough. When you are trying to understand it, you must go beyond your limited understanding. You need to explore it. And for example, one can say that, what does it mean of students coming to class? Right? If you'll ask me why students coming to class or what does it mean students coming to class, then I may give an answer like this. Students are coming to class for their attendance. But is it the appropriate understanding? Is it the final understanding? Is it the only one understanding that is available? Or there are multiple understanding? So if I'll ask each and every student, then every student will give different understanding on this question. So therefore, it is an exploratory question. What does it mean of students coming to class? And the answer lies with the exploration by the researcher. <coughs> the researcher will ask every student and the researcher will find a different answer to this question. So that's why this question is exploratory in nature. Okay, second question. I want Siddhant to read it. Descriptive question. Yes, sir. Descriptive. De descriptive. This sort of question usually follows on form of exploratory question. Descriptive questions are often concerned with quantifying an area, issues, or phenomenon. For example, how big is it? How many Who are, are there? those students? No, 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 no. Okay, for example, okay, okay, read it. For example, no, no, no I, I have written wrongly. For example, you just delete it. For example, who are those students who are coming to class? Okay, I have not deleted it. I just copy and paste it and uh, I got exposed. Okay, forget it. For example, who are those these students who are not coming to class? So, what is a descriptive? Research question. Now, descriptive research question is followed by the exploratory research question. Now, what you explore, you need to describe it. Right? Suppose, what you explore? 
now different students give different understanding as to why they are coming to class and each and every point needs description you will ask them why you think so then they will describe it right so descriptive questions are concerned with quantifying an area or issues or phenomena now they will say that why they are coming to class maybe they will say that they are coming to class for marks they are coming to class for attendance they are coming to class because they want to get ssb they want to become civil servant right and some of the students will say that no we should not come to class why should we come to class we can have our own preparation what is there in the class we are wasting time so some students can also answer like this so the example of a descriptive question is this who are these students who are not coming to class so here you will find there are some students who are coming to class and there are some students who are not coming to class and those who are coming to class they need to describe why they are coming to class and those who are not coming to class they will describe why they are not coming to class so basically exploratory questions after the exploratory questions description begin so research questions must explore research questions must describe right the there is no hard and fast you know difference between this exploratory questions and, and descriptive questions right both are not mutually uh, I many exclusively different from each other right it is intersectionally related but the intention of exploratory questions lies with exploration or you can say the discovery and the intention of descriptive questions is to describe what is explored or what is discovered right then next slide the explanatory question shakti you read it yes sir explanatory this could be described as the why question it asks about causes and effects where has this happened how did this happen what process are at work here for example where some students come and some students does not come to the class so basically again again when you are asking exploratory questions there is also a chance of touching the explanatory questions right but the purpose of explanatory questions is to answer the question why and the intention is to find the causes and effects of it for example why this has happened how did this has happened the moment you ask this type of questions it means you are demanding a explanation from the other side you are going to the field suppose you are working on you know intoxication right and you interviewed some intoxicated individual you ask why you are using it the moment you ask why you are using it then they will give the reasons why they are using you know intoxicated uh, you know stops right since we are giving the example of you know class student you can ask this question why some students come and some does not come to class then the students will say the reason ki why i come to class 
the other person will say that why he does not come to the class. Then they will provide the reasons. Remember these explanatory questions, these exploratory questions, descriptive questions, evaluative questions. Though theoretically it seems that theoretically they are different from each other, but practically one may not differentiate these four types of questions. Right? When you are exploring, you are also touching the description, you are also touching the explanation. When you are explaining, you are also touching the aspect of exploration, you are also touching the aspect of description. Right. Then the next is evaluative. Guru, are you there? Lincoln, you read. Yes, sir. Evaluative. Evaluative questions are concerned with the value of a particular social practice or a phenomena. Ask questions like, what work best? How good is it? How effective is this? This type of research often include making the recommendations about how something may be improved or changed and this aspect may be included in the research questions. May be included in the research question. What should yes, be sir. done for bringing all students to class? Right. So basically, it is the fourth category of research questions and the intention of this research questions is to discover the values values of your respondents values of yourself as a you know researcher and why this value is important this value is important in order to give some recommendation at the end of your research right so your research may fall into more than one of these categories. Remember, an ideal research questions must have all these four types of research questions. Right? Maybe if you are having six research questions, maybe two research questions may belong to exploratory, two may belong to the explanatory uh, descriptive one may become explanatory another another one will become you know evaluative so what is a ideal you know research question a ideal research question must hold these four types of research question so as a researcher your job is to explore as a researcher your job is to describe as a researcher your job is to explain and as a researcher your job is to evaluate but to what to the social and political phenomena so as a political science student our phenomena is the state remember whatever research you are doing if you are not connecting it to the state then we cannot say that that is a research belongs to you know political science now the next term is hypothesis hypothesis are a specific type of research question remember when you are writing research question at the end of the research question you are putting a question mark but the same research question can be written in the form of hypothesis it means every hypothesis is a research question but without a question mark or it is a research question with a full stop which actually are not question but rather a statements or assertion about the relation between two or more variables so what is a hypothesis now hypothesis is a tentative statement about the reality where there must be some variables there must be independent variable there must be dependent variable there must be some intervening variable 
if there is no variable in that tentative statement then it is not called as a hypothesis right so the purpose of research then is to test the asserted relationship with a view to prove or disprove it so every hypothesis must have the variable independent variable or dependent variable and this independent variable and dependent variable must have some relation and we are you know writing hypothesis in order to test the relation between these two variables and why we are testing the relationship between these two variables because we have the task of either proving or disproving that tentative statement over the reality for example if student come to class they will be intelligent if students come to class they will be intelligent this is a hypothesis now can you tell me what are the variables what are the variables one variable is student come to class and another is intelligent oh i have written here coming to class and intelligent are two variables which are claimed to be positively related that means the more you come to class the more you become what intelligent this positive relation that means if one grows other also grows this is a positive relation right if the student will come to class more then the student will become intelligent more now this positive relationship is supposed to be measured in the research so when you are testing this hypothesis then what you will do you will define what does it mean by coming to class what does it mean by intelligent for that you need to operationalize this two term i will come to that what is operationalization but you just you know hear this word from me that it needs operationalization coming to class means what intelligent means what once you define what is coming to class and what is intelligent then you will be in a position to measure the relationship between the coming to class and intelligent now these two variables coming to class and intelligent needs a operational definition then data must be gathered relating to each variable using statistical theory data is tested for knowing whether hypothesis has been proved or disproved so your job is not to prove and disprove the hypothesis remember i said when you are doing social research as a researcher then you must be away from your subjectivities so when you are away from your subjectivities then there is no chance of proving or disproving the hypothesis your job is to test the hypothesis with the statistical theory or tools your job is to operationalize the variables your job is to collect data on the relationship of the variables right. now there are two main types of relationship that are investigated in social science research one is the causal causal means the change in a causes change in b and another is associative so there are two relationship i mean we are talking about relationship between the variables now this relationship between the variables may take the form of causal relationship or it may take the form of associative relationship right so what is a causal relationship now if the change in a causes change in b for example if you you know go back to the earlier example if you come to the class you will become intelligent it means the more you come to class the more you become intelligent so here 
coming to class is independent variable and intelligent is dependent variable right so the example that is given in the previous slide is a causal relationship and what is a associative relationship now associative relationship a and b are related but not causally now example of a hypothesis based on associative relation one can say that second year students are more intelligent than the first year students if from this statement can you say that the relation between <clears throat> and what are the variables here second year students are more intelligent than the first year students what are the variables can anybody tell me what are the variables sir first variable is second year student are more intelligent no no the no second no. here the variable is students and intelligent right here the variables the variables are students and intelligent yes sir isn't it yes sir we are comparing between the first year and second year but first year and second year are not the variable first year and second year are the context in which i am trying to understand the students and their intelligence and when i am studying the first year students then i find the relation between the student and intelligent are negative in comparison to the second year students or second year in the second year actually second year so in the second year i find students are intelligent and in the first year i find students are not that much intelligent right so here the two variables are student and intelligent now this hypothesis asserts that there is a relation between the student and intelligent that means if you are a student then you are intelligent or you are not intelligent in the context of second year students and intelligent are positively related in the context of first year the student and intelligent are not positively related in comparison to the first but it is not a causal it is it is not a causal relationship right there are many intervening variables why the second year students are more intelligent is it because they are coming to class why the first year students are less intelligent is it because they are not coming to class so there are so many you know intervening variables so this hypothesis asserts that there is a relation between the student and intelligent but this relationship is not causal because it does not say that if you become more a student then you become more intelligent does this statement speak so that if you become more student then you become more intelligent if it if it would have been a fact then why not the first year students cannot be intelligent or why first year students cannot be intelligent they can be intelligent because they are also students if second year students can become intelligent so also first year students can become intelligent so that's why from this hypothesis one cannot say that if you become more a student then you become more intelligent so this you can i mean this, this this hypothesis you can find uh, there is a associational by associative you know relation between these variables now coming to the operational definition i said that each hypothesis you will find there are some variables and these variables must be defined so i used the variables called student and intelligent now we have to define what is a student am i talking about male student 
am i talking about female student am i talking about student in general category student in sc st am i talking about students who are coming to class regularly am i talking about all students right so students can be defined in different form so also intelligent can be also be defined in different term so we need to define these two term before we collect data on these two term or variables now it is the definition of variables that the researcher work with and adapt to help to focus the research questions and to decide what data to gather to address these research questions so what is a operational definition now a operational definition is a definitions of variables you are actually defining the variable in a very concrete term and why you are defining the variable in concrete term because it helps the researcher to work with the research questions it helps the researcher to adapt sorry it it helps the researcher to be focused on research question it help the researcher to decide what data to gather and i mean what data to gather and to address those questions so if you are having a concrete definition of your variables then it is helpful to yourself i mean it is always helpful for the researcher because the researcher gets a very clarity picture on his or her variables and when the researcher is going to the field and trying to collect the data then the researcher also gets or I many researcher can get the you know appropriate data because researcher is very much clear about his variables researcher is very much clear about his or her research questions so the purpose of operational definition is to give a clear indicator to the researcher to spell the variables to himself and others especially when a research starts so operational definition is very important operational definition mean you as a researcher you are defining the term for the sake of your research so variables are ideas that can be defined and understood differently by different individuals so variables means what vary that is a variable why it vary because people understand it in different ways in different situation the meaning of the variable changes so since variables are i mean changeable in nature then these variables must be defined and must be understood in a particular way right so it is very much essential for the researcher to define it clearly right why the researcher must define the variable because people understand variable in different ways there are multiple understanding of variables so that's why the researcher must define the variable uh, to see the purpose of his research and operational definition must be valid and specific to the research that means an operational definition what you as a researcher has designed that is valid and specific to your own research so beyond your research that operational definition will not stand because that is your operational definition that is not my operational definition so you have defined the variable in a typical way or in a unique way so that it will help to your research maybe you have designed a operational definition because it suits to your research so it must be able to be used to gather data and why i am repeating why you are operationalizing the variables because there is a need of gathering data from the field right to gather data from the field researcher must 
operationalize his or her variables in his in his or her hypothesis right so it must be able to it must be able to be used to gather data to help the researcher to address his or her research question hence it is context specific it means that operational definition is very much relevant for your research not it has a universal application it is designed for each research project and it may be of no use in other research project so the operational definition what you have defined for your variable that is or that has a meaning to your research not to the research of others so that's why every researcher is asked that what do you mean by that how you have understood it i may not understand in that way but you have understood since you are the researcher you must expose your understanding then we will listen otherwise if you are not able to define your variable it means your research is misleading now developing and refining research questions hypothesis is a process that goes alongside of the literature review so when you are doing the literature review you must have the idea of developing and refining your research question hypothesis the operationalization uh, of your variable you know it simult it it must be there in your mind right so when you are doing literature review you, you should not focus only on literature review you should also think about ki why i am doing literature review what is the destination of literature review <coughs> as a researcher if you think i mean if you think about this research question hypothesis operationalization of your variable during the research then only you will be in a position at the end of your literature review you will be in a position to prepare a nice you know research question or hypothesis which is qualitatively good so research questions hypothesis operationalization of variable constitute the formulation of research problem so formulation of research problem means formulating research questions formulating operationalization of variable formulating uh, you know hypothesis right formulating hypothesis formulating research question then operationalization of your variables right so all these three constitute the formulation of research problem so thank you thank you students if you have any confusion you can ask me right now thank you sir <clears throat> you thanked me for my presentation you thanked me since you know during my uh, i mean i am doing the refresher course uh, but i have not been relieved and i am happy that i am not i i have not been relieved uh, i must be there in the department uh, but it is okay no problem you thanked me but uh, uh, from today's you know discussion on formulation of research problem if you have any confusion you can ask or you can raise so after 5 minutes i will you know stop recording any confusion or i will stop recording then we will discuss what is your suggestion quick stop recording sir good <clears throat>